Good evening, our online viewers, YouTube subscriber, Facebook friends and friends. We're glad to be with you again this evening in order to continue our study of God's holy word. But before we listen to Dr. Frias, uh, let me read our foundation text first. Is our, our foundation text is found in Matthew 1. 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sin may god add his blessing to his children hi good evening everyone i hope everything is uh, fine with all of you or our view viewers and i'd like to before i start i'd like to thank you all again for continuously following our program there's so much you can learn from our program that's why uh, you can search my name the world free us in youtube and click subscribe and the notification bell so that more people will be able to hear about god's wonderful love of saving the lost and uh, maybe you can even also i was just talking to somebody earlier and he said he's sharing uh, this information to his friends and our friends are excited about it so we have a very interesting topic today only through Jesus. but before we start i would like to invite you to seek the lord in prayer father god thank you so much again for the blessings of this sabbath day thank you for your love thank you for the fellowship that we had uh, in the church with our fellow believers and our fellowship with you because every sabbath you said you descend down from heaven in spirit in order to fellowship with your people and uh, the, the the day that you have designated where you will come down and descend and uh, fellowship with your people so we, we felt that you have fellowship with us today i pray the father that i as i share this uh, revelation from you again or this presentation, I pray that you will open the hearts and minds of the listeners out there so that they will receive and accept your teachings in their minds and in their hearts. We ask that you forgive us from our worthy of fallen short of your glory. I ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Now, believe that our salvation is only through Jesus. You know, during this uh, time you know december the whole world is uh, celebrating the birth of jesus christ so what is the significance of this uh, uh, birth of jesus christ uh, to compare uh, to our subject today i would like to read i would like now to uh, transfer this uh, into the presentation that i prepared No, we, we are not uh, technical people. That's why sometimes uh, the our equipments get confused, and we all, we get confused ourselves. So when we get confused, the equipment get confused also. But as I was saying, uh, this, during the season, December, almost the whole world is celebrating the birth of our Savior, of the birth of Jesus Christ. I mean. So, 
uh, according to our uh, title, we should believe that salvation is is only through Jesus Christ. Now, why do why do we need salvation? Why do we need a savior? Let us consider all the things that are happening in this world right now. For example, uh, Jesus Christ said, "I have to come and." rescue my people because this world especially just before i come the second time this uh, earth will be in big turmoil turmoil there'll be a lot of problems and uh, for example right now if you consider the things that are happening right now uh, for nations rise against nation kingdom against kingdom that is found in uh, mark 13 8 and uh, you look at this uh, picture of uh, Putin in Russia. He is preparing his people for nuclear war. So there, the leaders of the world are preparing themselves not to make this earth comfortable for everyone, not uh, for people to, uh, not to teach people to love each other, but they're preparing on how to kill the other people, how to annihilate certain types of people. And Germany tells its citizens to start preparing, start stockpiling. North Korea uh, keeps on firing ballistic missiles, uh, trying to scare South Korea. Iranian vessels mounted uh, machine guns in their ship. So what are they? What are, why, why are they doing all of this? It seems like they're preparing uh, for a big war or to destroy each other. And uh, Switzerland's chief of the armed forces, the lieutenant uh, is preparing also his army for uh, battle. Iranian vessels, you know, as I've mentioned, mounted with machine guns. And Russia tests nuclear warheads that can outsmart the US anti, uh, anti you know, uh, anti whatever uh, bombs that uh, or flying objects that uh, Russia might uh, be preparing also in order to send to you uh, to the U.S. to destroy later on in case. Uh, so the U.S. is preparing something to stop those missiles that are being sent to them. Rumors of war. There's so much problem. We know what's going on right now. The uh, Israel and Hamas, you know, all of this. And the, if you will observe what is happening right now, there's always, whenever you hear uh, the, you op I open the news, very often you hear of earthquakes, devastation, like in, uh, 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 just uh, across uh, Jerusalem, where the uh, what you call these are what do you call those uh, people that are fighting with the Jews right now? Anyway, uh, there are so much there's so much destruction uh, that is going on there right now as they fight Hamas, and there are lots of eruptions. Now, right now, there's a warning that people in Iceland are in danger because in Iceland. We've been there, uh, the uh, under the under the soil, under the uh, the ground, is uh, are it's burning at about seven seven hundred uh, degrees Fahrenheit. That's how hot it is. So what they're doing in order for people above the ground to be able to take showers, they are cooling off. They have a system to cool off the uh, water because it's boiling down underneath. And uh, you know we hear of uh, roads and highways uh, being uh, destroyed because of earthquakes, massive lava flowing. You know, in other places, in places where there are volcanoes, people drowning because of tsunamis and other uh, disasters caused by water. Hurricane Sandy developed a tropical wave, and the largest and deadliest wildfires. You can see that. Just earlier this year, uh, this wildfire in uh, the West Coast 
some somewhere in uh, British Columbia. There are lots of homes that had been destroyed and even people dying from this fire. Amazing in uh, Alabama, there's the, they often have tornado, fierce storms have obliterated large areas of land from the US, uh, wiping out homes and businesses. And you see, uh, there's a photo of a whole house uh, because of a flood was brought by the water and it was blowing in the water. Uh, I did not know whether there were, there were people out there. Maybe they were able to escape. Otherwise, that would be a big problem there. And eventually this house must have sunk under the water. And nowadays, people that are dying, they are not even a, uh, placed in formal, um, what you call that, uh, caskets anymore. See? They are just wrapped. Uh, with uh, clothing, and then they married, they bury them like uh, multiple dead people, bury them in one big hole in the ground, and this is all. So, if even famine, mostly in Africa, many people are dying because of hunger, children, and so on. And besides, the world is really going against God now. All of this. Uh, things that were used to be uh, not 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 allowed before are all allowed now. Man can marry another man, a woman can marry another woman, and people are lovers of money more than lovers of God. So so much problem. So uh, after showing you all these situations that are happening in the whole world right now, what do you think? Do you think? We uh, God, if there's God out there, as you know, I know there is, but what I mean, you should just imagine in case you are not convinced yet about God, you know, do you think if there's a God, he will allow all these things to happen after he created this earth and humans, he will just allow all of them to destroy each other and to destroy the whole earth. So he promised to save us. So the, uh, our Savior, as I've mentioned, salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. So let me just show you or introduce you properly to Jesus Christ. Now, who is Jesus? According to Micah 5, 2, that is uh, in the Old Testament still. You know, Jesus Christ appeared in the New Testament. But before he even was born, before he appeared in the New Testament, there were prophecies already that were mentioned about him. It was made prophesied that he will come out of a place called Bethlehem. I do, I do not even know whether there's a place called Bethlehem at the time, but since God is able to see the future, he was able to uh, reveal it to the prophet to write down that this Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. It says in Ikariah in the Old Testament again, that he will be prophesied to be priced for 30 pieces of silver. And that's what happened to Jesus in the New Testament. It was prophesied also that uh, Jesus is a God, which is the word who was made flesh that dwelt among us. Is that true? Of course, Jesus Christ was made. Jesus Christ, a God, was made into a flesh in order that he can dwell among us. And the purpose of that, so that is, so that he will uh, be able to experience how we feel. Because when he was here on earth, he uh, bleeded, when he's wounded, he was, when he's tired, he uh, go to sleep and he get tired also. So he became really a human in a flesh. And according to Matthew 1, 20, 21, like my wife has just read, this Jesus, the Messiah, will be conceived by a, the Holy Ghost to save people from their sins, to save people from all these distractions that I have mentioned. And uh, Matthew 4, 10 says that he will be tempted by Satan. And it's in the Bible, you get, we have read that uh, Satan uh, invited Jesus to go up on top, on a high place, 
and told him to told him to jump. But remember, whenever Satan tempts Jesus, he always used the scripture. He always answered back Satan, according to this book, according to the Bible, I, I should uh, uh, I should not worship, I should not obey anyone else except God, except the Father. So Satan did not uh, succeed in tempting him. And according to Colossians 2, 8 and 9, Jesus has a fullness of Godhead bodily who man through vain philosophy will despise. You know, many people in this world despise Jesus. Many people in this world do not believe in Jesus, do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. That is why he was even uh, the people during his time, they even brought him to be killed, to be murdered, to be killed out there on the, when he uh, was placed to hang on the cross. And so uh, while many people say that Jesus is not a God, they never believe that because the Bible says that he is a God who man through vain philosophy will despise. Uh, this Jesus is God's son whose throne is in heaven. Now, there are some people here who uh, proclaim themselves to be uh, the Messiah. Okay, do they have a throne in heaven? Maybe they say they have, but I, I couldn't believe it anyway. And uh, 1 John 5, 5 and 13, he is a true God. He's a true God. So, and, and um, according to Acts 4, 7 to 12, there is no salvation without Christ. Enoch, which is just seven generations from Adam, prophesied about the coming Messiah already and with 10,000 of his saints. He's a godson who, before going to heaven, promised to return to take the righteous people to be with him in order to put them into safety, take them out of this world, which is a uh, uh, world that is destructive, that is in turmoil, and lots of problems here. So all this information about Jesus, where did we get them? We got all this information from the Bible. So the Bible says that all scriptures are given as an inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. That's why when the prophets wrote about this Messiah, Jesus Christ, they were revealed by God to the prophets. As I mentioned in another study, God used to talk to the prophets and told them to write. They heard, they did not see God, but they heard his voice or he revealed himself through dreams and visions. So that's why they, they were able to write all of this. Prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The, the scripture cannot be broken, he said. Now, how did he just demonstrate his confidence and belief in the Bible. According to Matthew 4, 4 and 7, 10, he always answered Satan from the scriptures. He always said, it is written. It is written, the word is truth. So that's why Satan was not, was not, able, was not able to succeed in tempting him or doing what he wanted Jesus to do. Is that what we're doing also? Uh, whenever we're tempted, Always tell the, the tempter according to the scripture. That's why you have to know the teachings of the Bible. So you can say you'll be able to identify whether uh, the temptation uh, is confirmed the Bible, whether what the evil one is talking to you, uh, is telling you is from the Bible or not. And if it cannot be confirmed the Bible, you know that that person is a disciple of Satan. Uh, because anybody who, according to Jesus, anybody, if you are against me, if you are not with me, you are against me. So it's an antichrist. Do Bible prophecies confirm inspiration? The Bible says, I am the Lord. New things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. I am God declaring the end from the beginning. Who is able to declare the end uh, from the beginning? I know that uh, there. Are, I know that there are many uh, people who 
are able to give uh, information about the future, but sometimes they study first the uh, what you call that the uh, where how, uh, the behavior of the person, experience, and there's a they can track down what will happen in the future, but nobody can do it like the Bible because all his prophecies were all uh, fulfilled the way it they were written. Now, for example, in the Bible, it says that this earth will only be uh, dominated by four empires. Okay? That uh, there will only be four empires that will be able to control the whole world. After that, no one else. People will just fight each other. Those empires are Babylon, which ruled between 612 to 539 BC, Medo Persia, 539, 331 BC, Greece, 331 to 168 BC, and Rome. But in the Bible, it was also prophesied that the last of these four kingdoms will be Rome. And there will be nobody who will be able to conquer Rome. But all of this from Babylon, they were defeated by these other kingdoms that are smaller than them. But Rome, nobody beat Rome. Almost the whole of Europe, if you go to Rome, near the Colosseum, there's a map there that almost the whole of Europe had been occupied by Rome. And I mean, um, empires to control the whole world, uh, that, is, that means that they pay taxes, they, they honor, they pay, they report to these uh, kingdoms uh, before. That's why even on the birth of Jesus Christ, they were there in uh, Bethlehem, why were they there? Because they're supposed to report, to pay taxes. Now, anyway, but it was also prophesied that although nobody will beat Rome, Rome will divide into 10 different kingdoms. So did it happen according to the Bible? What it says there, they happen according to the Bible. Between 351 and AD and AD 476, the great empire of Rome was broken up and divided into 10 tribes of nation. They are as follows, the Lombards, Franks, Ostrogoths, Visigoths, Burgundia, Swabi, Hiroli, Vandals, Alemanni, and Saxon. Of course, if we leave it here, you might not know which places are this, but uh, later on, they translated those places in English uh, it's now Europe today. These 10 kingdoms were Italy, France, England, Austria, Belgium, Holland, Spain, Portugal, Germany, and Switzerland. And all of these kingdoms will be around when Jesus comes the second time. So they will not disappear. Now, according to the Bible also, Cyrus will be the king who will capture Babylon. That's in Isaiah 45, 1 and 3. Before it happened, Cyrus really came and invaded Babylon and defeated Babylon. That's why uh, it, it, uh, Cyrus was the king of uh, Middle Persia. And then it's also prophesied that after Babylon's destruction, because Babylon was the greatest, richest uh, empire or kingdom that ever existed before, but anyway, after Babylon's destruction, it will never be inhabited again. Uh, that's found in Isaiah and also in Jeremiah. Now, is that true? About four hours drive outside of Baghdad, you will still see this place of Babylon. It's like a desolate place. There's nice temperature. Uh, it's a nice area. And even Saddam Hussein, when he was uh, still alive, he said that he's going to rebuild Babylon, but did he succeed? He's now, uh, he has passed away and Babylon is still there the way it is because God has cursed this place and said it will never be inhabited again. What else? Egypt, a formerly great nation, would never again have a commanding position among the nations. Uh, we've been to Egypt. It was not as... Uh, what you call it, as, as glamorous as it used to be uh, described as it described. 
the way it was before. It's now a very poor uh, country. And in, in fact, when we were there, we were even told not to brush with the water because we could get poison. And um, earth and shaking calamities and fear toward the end time, according to Luke 21, 25. So we must be nearing the end time because all of this uh, earth shaking calamities and so much fear are already happening here in this earth right now. Moral degeneracy, degeneracy and decline of spirituality in the last days. And of course, we already know more like uh, immorality happening right now. Uh, and uh, God did not teach that a male should marry a, another male. He, uh, he said a male should be should marry a female, but nowadays, male to male, female to female, it's all happening nowadays. And, uh, but it was prophesied also in the Bible, time will come when men will leave the natural use of a woman, burn their last one and to another, man with another man. Now, these are all biblical. And it also said that that's why in Matthew, uh, God said, because of the hardness of the heart, then uh, Moses in, uh, like, was able to allow uh, divorces, but it has to uh, be based on some specific reasons, like uh, adultery, for example. But that was not the intention of God. That's why he said, because of the hardness of their heart, this happens. Many marriages nowadays are failing. And of course, the Bible prophesied also that this is in the New Testament here that God spake of a certain place of the seventh day, Sabbath, but people will not obey it because of unbelief. You can see it there, right there. And this is in Hebrews, the New Testament. Again, God said that harden not your heart because some people say there must have been confusion over time to the real Sabbath, Sabbath, which is the real Sabbath. But there was no confusion at all because only 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was here and he kept the Sabbath. Every Sabbath, he goes to the synagogue or he worships with his uh, fellow disciples and fellow believers. And so he said, harden not your heart. And said he said, in verse 9, there remained a rest for the people of God. And that is every seventh day. And let us labor not to enter into this. Uh, to in, let us labor to enter into this rest. Otherwise, we will fall in the same example of unbelief. And he even uh, gave a judgment. Uh, according to the Bible, God said, the word that I've spoken is the judge in the end. So if the word is spoken by him, if the judge in the end, what did he speak about people who do not obey the Sabbath commandment? He said, the fearful, the unbelieving. Remember the reason why many people do not obey the seven-day Sabbath commandment? Because it's because of unbelief. And it's written here that the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that's why God gave so many warnings for us not to just be convinced with any teachings. Because if you are convinced with any teachings, God can see in the heart that you're not willing to accept him. God could give you a strong delusion. And that's why he also said that. Uh, so that they will continue to believe a lie that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, lots of things happening right now. He said, before he comes in the last days, people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, ungrateful, unloving, brutal, lovers of holding the form of God, uh, religion and denying his power, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Are they happening right now? Of course they are. He and other, there are other statements in the Bible to confirm that the Bible is uh, true or is the truthful book. 
uh, that contains the mind of God. That's why he prophesied. It's prophesied in the Bible, John 26, 12. He hung the earth upon nothing. You know, many people, I mean, people before do not believe that this earth is hanging upon nothing. But then science has discovered that the earth is hanging on nothing. It's right on the space. It also said, the Bible also says in Isaiah 40, verse 12, he sitteth around the circle of the earth before Notre Dame or any other uh, famous man was able to say that the earth is round. God already said it in the Bible through the prophets. So Notre Dame and these other people who had been celebrated by the people because they said that the earth is round. Maybe he had, uh, he had read it from the Bible. That's why he said the earth is round. But the Bible was the original information of them. To make weight for the winds. Before, people do not believe that the wind has weight. But scientists now knew that and uh, realized that you can weigh, there's a weight on the wind. Like balloon, put a bunch of balloon, put it in a weight and it will weigh. Uh, by him, all things consist. Consist means hold together or cohere. The Bible translations put it all together. This is the answer to the nuclear physicist worrisome question about the atom. The mystery of the atom does not involve its benumbing mega power, but rather why doesn't the atom fly apart from each other? Scientific knowledge says that it should, but it doesn't. This puzzling power is so mysterious but it's only possible because of the creator of it, which is God himself. Our biblical health principles tuned to the 21st century. Well, of course, before uh, in the early times, people just probably leave the dead above ground. But uh, God said that he should bury them and it has saved countless thousands of people uh, because if they let them just rot in the ground, the dead bodies, animals or people, it will contaminate the air and many more people will die. But when they obeyed God, burying them on the ground, it eliminated those big dangers. Leave alcohol alone. Now, those who do not obey God find alcohol to be causing them to have a lot of problems. But for those who listen, millions of alcoholics who become sober, millions of families are united and millions of broken homes were mended. Uh, multi, multiplied thousands of lives saved by sober driving, for example, because driving, uh, people who are drunk, when they drive, they, are, they have a risk of getting into an accident and many accidents are happening all the time, especially in big freeways. And a lot of people are being killed at a time that they should not be dying yet, maybe. Thousands of governed businesses and professional leaders making clear-minded decisions because uh, of being sober. Are there historical statements in the Bible that are accurate? The Bible says, I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. The Bible states historical statements that were accurate. For example, for years, skeptics said that the Bible was unreliable because it mentioned the Hittite nation and cities like Nineveh and Sodom, which they denied ever existed. But now modern archeology span has confirmed they were able to dig artifacts and remains of those civilization underground to prove that they have existed before. Uh, critics, said that Bible mentioned King Belshazzar and Sargon never existed. But once again, they have been confirmed that they did exist. So the Bible is always correct in whatever they said. The skeptic says that the Bible record of Moses was not reliable because it mentions writing and the wheeled vehicles, neither of which they say existed at the time. Of course, they were wrong again. And so, because uh, it was dubbed uh, through an expedition by Ron Wyatt, he was able to dig 
uh, the crust of uh, these wheeled vehicles that the Bible says were used by the Egyptian army to pursue the children of God, children of Israel. So there were things that were found to confirm the things that were mentioned in the Bible. See that? Chariot wheels found in the red, under the Red Sea. Uh, Chariot wheel fixed to act, fixed to accept standing attention on the seaboard. Some of them were even standing in position on the seaboard. Above right is a four-spoke chariot wheel on the Red Sea found in 1998. So it confirms all the things, information that there were in the Bible that you can find the Bible, they're all confirmed um, uh, by people also, especially these excavators um, and many more. Some people say that why are the Chinese, which is a large uh, population of the world, not mentioned the Bible? Again, they are wrong because in Isaiah 1 and uh, 24, 6 and so on, the Chinese were mentioned. Of course, they were not called Chinese before, they were called Sinims. I had a, a, a friend who was a Chinese and I asked, asked them to confirm this. I asked them, how were you called before? Because before, uh, were you been, have you been called Chinese all the time? He said, no, they were called Sinims. So the Chinese are in the Bible also, but they did not write a lot about them because they didn't really play an important role in the uh, Bible, in the early Bible times. So uh, they, they didn't play an important role. Right? And the Sunday worship was also mentioned in the Bible. Somebody will change the worship day that God has said that commanded should be obeyed. And the, it, this was also fulfilled by Nimrod, who changed the worship on a seven-day Sabbath to Sunday. And he also, to show his rebellion against God, he even established the Church of Satan. And it says here, Nimrod had planned to will the whole world, so he even married his own mother, Timiramis. But you can find that, I'm not inventing this story, you can find that in history, just dig it up. Others say, there are people who say that, how come dinosaurs are not in the Bible? Of course, as I've mentioned, they were not called dinosaurs at that time, but it mentioned of big animals like uh, Behemoth and Levachan, and who has uh, skin like a crocodile. And uh, they said that the legs alone are like trees, the big, big animals. I believe that God allowed them to die during the flood because they are they were very destructive animals. Now, one of the greatest miracles of the Bible is its unity. The 66 books of the Bible were written on three continents by kings, shepherds, scientists, attorneys, army, general, fishermen, priests, and physicians. Now they did not write them, they just translated them to be placed in a book. Remember, I said that uh, uh, King James, uh, uh, someone commanded to gather all those art, uh, artifacts, ancient artifacts that were found from ruins and cities that were buried underground. And he gathered all of them and he summoned about 40 to 60 people, about 40 people like, in order to translate it so that it could be read, readable by people. And he commanded that nobody should change anything. That's why the Bible tells the truth and nobody is able to change because they were uh, watching each other. Uh, it seems totally conceivable, but the 66 books maintain harmony with each other. And talk about outstanding, ask people who have viewed the identical event to each give a report of what happened. If uh, two people only will write on the same topic, there will be time when they will probably, there will be some parts there where they will be contradicting each other. But Holy Man of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Bible says that 
if any man be in Christ, he will become a new creature. The Bible says in the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, Jesus expounded unto them the importance of being saved. And that's the photo of them of uh, baby Jesus. There are great advantages on a person who accepts the Bible as God's inspired word. They will have uh, great advantages. And uh, they will, you know, what is the advantage? They will understand more than the ancients because uh, they keep the present. Thou hast made me wiser also. They become wiser. In Isaiah 55, 9, for as the heaven and earth are higher than the earth, heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts according to God. Now, God says here that even uh, those people who were not, uh, uh, the people even with lesser education are wiser than other people who might be very educated. In what way are they wiser? It's because they are thinking of eternal uh, everlasting life, for example. While many of these uh, successful people, educated people, they do not believe, they don't care about the, these things. So who's wiser? Somebody who only is satisfied just by just being alive for about 70 years, 70 to 100 years? Or somebody who try <coughs> or obey or believe God's teachings and try to make himself qualified to have, to be able to live uh, everlasting, eternally. God created the earth and all its living creatures, uh, organism in six literal days. And these were things that were mentioned in the Bible, which when they dug up and tried to verify, they found them to be true. A worldwide flood destroyed every living thing except the sea life and what it was what was inside Noah's Ark. Of course, the different languages of the world began in the Tower of Babel. Evolutionists will never know the age of the earth because it was created with apparent age as were Adam and Eve. Crucial world happenings have brought the power and appeal of the Bible into sharp focus. The failure of collapse of communism, the losing of grip of credibility in the theory of evolution. See, a lot of people who uh, try to introduce the belief of evolution, they cannot really prove prove it. And uh, other mysteries. Now, the Bible has a universal appeal. The word is a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 105. Things written and spoken gives joy to people who believe and obey them. We're created in God's image. Let your light shine before man. And so it will help us answer some puzzling questions. Questions like, where did I come from? Of course, we are sons and daughters of God, so we came from God. Why are we here? In order to restore God's image, Romans 8, 29. What is my future? There's no guesswork about the future. God prepared a place for us where God's obedient followers will live forever. Now, of course, as uh, we started the, uh, this uh, study, uh, we said that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Now, how will Jesus save us? The first time Jesus came here to this earth, he stepped down on the ground because his purpose was to look for the sinners and teach them about about salvation. They are teaching them on how to uh, be with God. Now, but this time when he comes back, he is not going to step in the ground anymore because this earth is very sinful already. So God, Jesus will just appear in the clouds of heaven and all the angels are with him. So the angels are going to come down and take these people they will be assigned, I believe, one angel for each person that will be saved and take them to God's heavenly kingdom. The scriptures cannot be broken. And why did why is Jesus going to come? His purpose is to reward everyone so nobody can escape. There will be four kinds of people 
that will be found on earth when Jesus comes again. One are those people who are alive and they were obeying him. Commandments and they were connected to him. And the other group of people are those who died. But before they died, they were connected to God. And the third one are a group of people who were alive, who are alive, but they were disobedient to God. They don't care about all these things that the Bible says, or the sinners, that's what they are. And the fourth group of people are those who died, and they were not connected to God when they died. The righteous people who were alive, and the, uh, those who died, and uh, who were connected to God, God is going to resurrect them. So these two groups of people will together be ascending to heaven to stay with our Heavenly Father for a thousand years before they are brought back in order that the other ones who were not saved will be burned. So those who are living and not obeying God will die. And they know they will die because they cannot uh, look at the glory of God. And Revelation 20 verse 5 said, The wicked dead will not rise up from their graves, but will remain dead in their graves for another thousand years, when they will be resurrected just to receive punishment. They will be made alive by God so that God can burn them together with Satan. The living sinners will run, hide, and commit suicide and all died to join the wicked dead for 1,000 years also when they'll be resurrected to receive punishment in hellfire with the rest of the sinners. The sinners will be rewarded with vengeance and punishment. What is the effect of Jesus coming? Uh, there will be great uh, turmoil on this earth that's never seen before. Islands will fled away mountains lost cities will be broken down and the earth will become uh, a wilderness and signs of his second coming god did not give us a specific date at when i mean jesus did not give a specific date as to when he's going to come he said that no one knows the day and the hour because of this what the disciples asked jesus they asked him, when are you coming? But uh, God, uh, Jesus said that there will be things to watch for which will happen first before it comes. There will be, as we mentioned, to repeat it, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation. Many will run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. With the increase of knowledge, iniquity or sinfulness shall also abound. Evil men and impostors will grow worse, deceiving and being deceived. As iniquity or sinfulness combines with knowledge in the last days, uh, it, will, the, it will happen. Uh, then this world will be in a perilous time. People will be lovers of self more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but no power, always learning, but not coming to the knowledge of the truth. They are also filled with appetite in drinking, sex, and worldly pleasure. Matthew 24, 37, 39. But the very last sign is, the very last sign is the God's word, God's teaching will be preached as a witness to all nations. And that is going right now, on right now. And next month, I'm going to the Philippines because four uh, places, four organizations, has invited me to teach this, to preach the gospel. So uh, so that it will be, uh, like I know there are many mega preachers out there who have thousands of people listening also. But you have to watch out what they are teaching. But we also have thousands and even millions of people viewing and listening to our program because if you look at the internet, so many people who are also teaching the truth about the Bible, are broadcasting uh, God's gospel message out there. So what did Christ warn us? He said that uh, he wants us to, uh, to do because of his love. He said he, wa he warned us that we should prepare and be ready. Pray. 
take heed. It is Christ's great desire that we uh, could, should be with him when he comes. And there's an illustration that he gave here. Uh, a woman who got nervous when she found her long absent husband is coming home. Now, why was she nervous? Because while the husband was away, she was living in sin, falling around with another man. This is also what happens. While Jesus is not here, he's supposed to be, we are supposed to be with Jesus, with God. But because he's not here yet, we're fooling around with sinfulness. We're, uh, dr we're drunken by worldliness. So, or those people who are not preparing when Jesus comes, they will feel nervous because Jesus will come here with vengeance to those who did not receive his word and did not obey him. And Jesus coming is very near because all the signs have been fulfilled. They were all mentioned in the Bible. Capital labor troubles, wars and commotion, unrest, fear, upheaval, increase of knowledge, scoopers and religious skeptics who turn away from the Bible, moral degeneracy, and decline of spirituality, grace for pleasure, uh, increasing lawlessness, uh, bloody crime and violence, destructive turning uh, to spiritism, beliefs in the living dead, beliefs in the vampire, sorcery, witchcraft, tremors, etc., enchanters, necromancers, wizards, as propagated by the Holy, by the evil spirit, I mean. And they're even working miracles. That's why if you are not careful, you could even be deceived. So a very special message to the world, this very last days, prepare, prepare. Just how near is Jesus going to come? All these things must happen because they were all prophesied before he comes. But, uh, Satan was telling many, Satan is telling many falsehood regarding Jesus' second coming. With lying wonders and miracles, he will deceive millions by telling them that you've been waiting and your Jesus is not here yet. Uh, he's not coming, never coming. Jesus said that he won't cast out anyone who comes to him, receive him and become his son and daughter. Put God's law in your mind. And get ready because according to Jesus, he'll come when we think not of it. We, he will come and we, uh, when we will be caught, many people will be caught unaware because they were so busy with uh, uh, cares of life. So the end shall come, apocalypse floods and so on. Uh, and they are all predicted. China's capital has recorded its heaviest rainfall, for example. Typhoon Kanum brought heavy rains and powerful winds in the southern Japan. The weekend flooding at Nova Scotia was caused by the heaviest torrential rains to hit the Atlantic region in a few years. And a sign of the last days, uh, God revealed the last sign, which is the preaching of the gospel as a witness the whole people of the world. That's why, the reason why I believe that Jesus wants to save you, that's the reason why you are out there listening. Uh, because God made a way for you to listen to this gospel message because he would like to save you. The Bible tells us that the many terrifying things taking place on the earth today actually provide a reason for hope. Why Jesus said, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see all of these things happening at the same time, wars, commotion of wars, floods, and different disasters, we should look up and prepare for our salvation, and so on. Today's extreme weather is not a punishment from God. All these disasters that are happening right now, it's not a punishment from God. Actually, they are, prob they are probably caused by his enemy because uh, the enemy is a great wrath just before Jesus comes. But when Jesus uh, uh, come in and uh, intervenes, right now he's not intervening because as I mentioned, 
uh, Satan became the, uh, the emperor of this world. So he's doing so many things to uh, so many disasters and disappointment and sadness to people so that they will not believe that there's a God. They will say, oh, there's a God, why did they do this? He's causing all of this. And he's causing death also. Although God is the author of death because he said that if you sin, you will surely die. But Satan wants to create instances where people will die through wars, through other things, because when they die, especially if they're not with Christ, he knows that he, that he was able to take them in his camp. So, you should be careful. Extreme weather can help Bible cope up, uh, help you to cope up according to the Bible. And Jesus has an agenda before he will come. Before Jesus comes, the weather will be a big issue. And this big issue, climate change and all of this, uh, it will, uh, the world leaders will organize a one world order wherein you cannot even buy yourself unless you have the mark of the peace, mark of rebellion against God. And so we should prepare for that. And after that, the seven last plagues will come. And God is going to close the probation and she will seal those people who he wants to save because they have obeyed him and accepted and obeyed him. So my question to you, my friends out there who are listening, are you planning to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes? Are you planning to get ready? Now, I would like to close this uh, uh, program with a music here. As you are listening to this uh, music, I hope that you are thinking deeply as to what you will do. To obey, accept, receive, and accept Jesus with all his fruitful teaching, or to just continue remaining the way you are, because you are embarrassed that if you accept Jesus, your friends might laugh at you, or some um, relatives might say you're turning your back from them. But for me and my house, I don't care what other people say. I'm looking forward to the time when Jesus comes and I would like to be with him. I would like him to reward me with everlasting life. Isn't it a great being able to live forever without dying anymore? That's fantastic. I promise that if we abide with him, he's going to give us that kind of reward. Thank you so much. I would like to thank you, my friends, for spending time with us today and learning more about the teachings of God's Word, which is the Holy Bible. 
And I wish, I hope that you will consider seriously this uh, promise of Jesus that even if we die, he will be able to resurrect us. And if we abide with him, with his truthful teachings and his love, he will even uh, give us everlasting life when he comes as our reward. I would like to invite you now to uh, bow your heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you so much again for all this revelation that you have given to me, which you allowed me or enabled me to share with the viewers out there, with our, my, our friends out there. I pray, dear Father, that those who have listened to this revelation will consider it seriously and that they would create a desire to be with you because I would like them also to join us in meeting you when you come and be able to receive that reward of everlasting life, never to die again, and to bring us in a place where there's no more sin, no more sorrow, no more death. I ask your Father that uh, for you forgive us our sins and give us power to overcome our weakness weaknesses and temptation. So as we dismiss from each other, help us to reflect what we have learned about you in our lives, in our character, and in our actions. And I hope that uh, we will give, surrender our lives to Jesus Christ because he is the only one who is able to save us according to his holy word. I ask now that you dismiss us with your blessing. I ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name. I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. Night.